Hello again, this is the Watering Man, Spiritual Toolbox number 256, John chapter 3, recording number 105, audio recording number 574, and examination table number 234. <coughs> We'll be continuing in John chapter 3, verse 19 now. <clears throat> uh, been a <laughs> rough couple days, but it's all right. It's kind of explaining what's, go what, what's been going on. Uh, uh, I just got down ice in my head down real good and uh, ate a little bit, so... I'm going for it. Uh, um, yeah, I looked out there. It's uh, the weather's changed and the uh, snowing and stuff a little, but ah, you know, I feel like I've been banging my head and getting kicked by donkeys and <laughs> inside the head and all kinds of stuff. Uh, but hey, I'm still alive, you know. Um, <sighs> I'll just keep. Keep persevering through it, okay? It's all, it's laughable. It's not going to last forever. Okay, let's start in John 3, 19 now. Start out reading it from the King James Version. <clears throat> Just a second. Apologize, it's been a little rough breathing and stuff the last couple days. I, I'm working on it. I'm, I'm trying to get through it. It's doing a little bit better now. It's not as much pressure over here, and my head's calmed down a little bit. Uh, I don't know what was going on, but it, it wasn't feeling too good. <laughs> okay, in John 3.19, in the King James Version, it says, And this is the condemnation, that light is come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. Now let's not just settle for taking that chance and say, well, we've done a good job. We're done with it. I don't need no more than that. I swallowed it like a hog and I no need to look at it and worry about regurgitating it and thinking about it again. We're just, it's good enough. I'll punch my stamp. I did my deed. I'll polish the outside of the cup. Don't look pretty good in it. <clears throat> nah, better look at that thing. Okay, let's see what we can get out of it. And let the spirit interpret it. With the green way, not that red way, interpret it. Huh? Whoa, that's going to get you in trouble. That old barking dog inside you. That he hawing donkey, he haw, he haw. That parakeet that says, "Do do do this, do that. Don't do this, do that, do that, do this." So it tells you what's good and evil. Don't trust it. That hog sock, <coughs> ooh, make you sick. All right, that's a sneaky snake. Uh, wants to poison you, huh? That's your own stinking thinking that accuses you and tries to be your friend, but it's false. It's a liar and the truth not in it. Acknowledge. Make God true. God's the truth. He's your exceeding great reward. God is the greatest. God is the most awesome thing. He'll, he's what fulfills you. Not this good and evil stuff. On the day that you eat there, uh, eat from that tree of the knowledge of good and evil, your own right-mindedness, do what you think is right because... The true king is not in your land, not not ruling in your land. You're allowing that old alpha dog to rule in your mind. On the day that you eat thereof from that tree, you shall surely die. Speaks of separation. You'll be separated from God. You'll be falling away. <laughs> right? I act a little goofy, but that's all, just so you get the point. Right? 
<clears throat> whatever would make it memorable to you. If it's standing out and wow, that's odd, that's out of place. Not like I'm in a big suit and tie. Stand up there, look down my long stony nose that you condemn you to hell. That's our place to the right mindedness of God. His right mindedness is God's love. That's beyond the mere description of word. God's ways are easy, light. Hmm? That other way is kind of like a big old, like the uh, paid guy got good news. Don't know no better. Don't hate them, but just recognize them. Call their number. And that's inside yourself and people outside trying to push stuff down your throat that's just it's condemn, condemnation. They're not in. Christ Jesus, they're not resting and relying on God. They got a log in their eye. And they're trying to push that log down your throat. Right? Down your spiritual throat, like in your mind. Here, eat this, or else. Hmm? Believe the way I do, or else you're going to hell. Hmm? That's not right. Hmm? Right? Now... It's kind of the difference between light and dark. Okay? Light is kind of like illuminating it, making it sure you understand it. We'll get to that a little bit better here in this first. I'll open it up. Darkness is just remaining in ignorance. We'll get to that. We'll define that out better. Okay? I've got about seven pages of notes, so I'm not, no way going to get that done on this recording. Oh, I could probably push through it, but I'll be skipping so much stuff. It'd be, it w wouldn't be like skimming the water, just taking the translation and saying, well, that's good enough. Hmm. I read the whole book of Matthew today. Well, it didn't, but how much of it did you actually study? Did you, what did you get out of it? Hmm? Did you interpret it with that red way? God is a big bad boy and all this stuff. Huh? God's the most villainous person I ever did, uh, ever could even imagine. And beyond. He's the greatest and he's gonna whip your butt to bed. Forever and ever in the infinity plus one plus two plus three. If that's not big enough, we'll just add plus four. Hmm? Wrong, wrong, wrong. It's interpreted with the will of God, with that green light of God. What God is passionately and desiring to bring you back to his way of thinking. His exceeding, he's your exceeding great reward. Bring you back to his way. His right mindedness. He loves you beyond the description of mere words. So much that he's put an insurance, like an insurance clause down inside you to where even if you want to stay all the way the lightest, lightweight in his character as you could possibly get, it's still he's not going to lose one. It might be so lightweight that you can't, it's imperceptible to you. It's not imperceptible to God. God cannot deny himself. So he put that little measure down in there. Tiny, 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 like that plankling size, that seed of faith. Hmm. Like in uh, that metron, that limited portion. Hmm. But uh, it could be increased through him. Only, only God can do this. you got to agree with him. Hmm. He's giving you opportunities. Recognize it. Don't don't agree with that old red Adamic way. That beast nature inside of you saying do all this and then blaming it on everything else and not taking no no responsibility that you're doing it yourself. Man, human you humanistic thinking and anthropos thinking in you is uh will reap what it sows. It feeds that way, it's gonna separate. It's not going into God. It's not gonna qualify. 
All right? Qualified negation to go away. Fall away. You're stuck or whatever, wherever you're at in each and every thought process. But in order for God to make his appearance, giving you the ability to love a little bit more like he does, you got to green light it. Give all that you have. Hmm? Any bit of good news he's giving you and that good news that he put within you that you don't even know nothing about, start out with. That seed of faith. Tell me yourself. In the tiniest, tiniest recesses of your mind, the deep, and that deep in you has been called. Say the called out ones. To he that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says. And to the churches, the called out ones inside you, in your holy of holies. Don't just picture it out here, some building, and give that credit. Man, look how great that is. That's transitory. Temporary and unsatisfactory. Don't even, don't even do these natural bodies and stuff. Or look how great I am, man. You know, I just great. I wear a big suit. Right? Big old cockadoodaloo. Baby rooster. Little bit tiny rooster. Think it's mine. the biggest and baddest. Mm -mm. I'm number one. No, no, no. God is number one. God's the alpha. You're not that other's alpha dog. Alpha beast nature. It's a negative alpha. Huh? The negative of alpha. The opposite. Name it for what it is. That's the carnal mind. To be carnally minded this death. The carnal mind is enmity against God. When it says against, that's ice. Remember Romans eight chapter or chapter eight verse seven. That against right there is M two ice. E I S going to and towards God indicating their destination and where your origin is. You're starting in God, going through this stuff and heading back to God, gaining levels of the ability to love as God loves us. And God loves us beyond the description of mere words. Now, on words, just like in this ancient language, it's a picture language. Whenever we speak, are we not communicating what, are, through our words, trying to communicate like pictures? Either actions or nouns, verbs, objects, and stuff, things going on, trying to give a, that picture to someone else. Communicate it well, articulate it so that they can receive that thing. They can get a better understanding of it, enlightenment of it. That light is being exposed to them hmm? to drive out that ignorance of what the other person is picturing in their mind, what they're thinking. If I try to describe this. Little glasses case right here. I can use a thousand words to try to make up great big old, make up a, an essay, a thousand word essay. And I couldn't describe it adequately to you if you can't see, hear, taste, touch, or smell because you got that log of ego in your own mind that's driving out any comprehension, any true experience of what this is. So if I throw that thing, it goes across the room. The action, me throwing it across the room. And what's all going on? It's like the living word. The word of God. The thought processes of God trying to describe what God's doing. And he's omnipresent and he's doing everyone. In, outside and inside, but inside first. Hmm? You know, it's holy of holies. And in the holy place, remember it had the outer court, holy place, holy holies, right? Outer court, like the buildings, material stuff, okay? Like the Hieron physical temple, okay? Then the people, and then inside, outer court, holy place, holy of holies. In the New Testament, or the New Covenant, the New Promise, it's just condensed down to the outer court, and the holy place is condensed down to 
the holy place. And that's separated from the holy of holies inside of you. Right where God's working. We have to go right in there and agree with God so he can, like he's baptizing you, immersing you, washing you clean, whiter, pure, holy. Bringing you from your old stinking thinking back into his right thinking, his love beyond words. From this state of being, it's all conditional or all just a facade. I love you, man. Like some guy drinking the beer on the fishing bank and being drunk and skunk. Man, I love you. <laughs> and they don't even know you. And then they might be thinking in their mind, yeah, if this guy turns away, I'm going to take his beer and maybe shoot him in the back. <laughs> like, like some old uh, Western movie or something. Some guy going to rob him. I'm going to rob that guy as soon as I get the chance. <laughs> See, the, the uh, alcohol is just not the problem. See? Strong drink is raging, and you're not wise if you're intoxicated, inebriated by it. <laughs> Become kind of a loose cannon, right? Can't tell what what's going on, Harley. You get so drunk, you can't even hardly stand up. That's not real smart, right? <laughs> a little bit of it's not going to hurt you at all, okay? Oh, I mean, unless there's something wrong. Like, I, I can't drink wine. A little bitty thumb, I'll get whelps all over my body because I'm, I'm allergic to it. So I can't drink it. Nope, don't want that. Okay. But if I want a, a, a beer, I can drink one. And no big deal. But I just don't really normally do that. It, don't need it. Okay. Don't condemn nobody. Just, I, I don't choose to do that. Hmm? Now, it's like drinking a big bunch of sugar now, with diet, and I got diabetes. Um, I probably not do that very much. Drink a little bit of tea, but with very, very little sugar, if any, in it. Okay? or water, or something like that, you know, or hot tea, but, I mean, that's my choice, I ha I need to do this thing, so watch it, so I'm not getting the blow, <laughs> because I'm being stupid, you know, my foot hurts, well, what's it hurt for, it's got a hole in it, it's bleeding, why, why is it doing that? Because I shot myself in the foot. <laughs> I think that I, put, I think you put this stuff in me that I knew was better than to do that. Like a burner over there. Over there, real, real hot, glowing red. Going, man, if I go over there and put my hand, your hand on it, your work, speaking of your works, your efforts, if I go over and touch that thing in my bare hand, Hey, it won't hurt you. Go ahead. Go over and ah, burn your hand. You've done that to yourself. You do better than that. Big old patch of poison ivy over there. If it don't bother you, you go stand in it. Ain't no big deal. But if it may it get it breaks you all out and you can't I mean and you go stand in it and then cry about getting uh or because someone else told you to, oh, it will hurt you. And you go over here like a big old dummy, a dumbass, dumb donkey nature. You listen to that stuff. You big stupid. Don't do it. You're not afraid of it, but you're just being wise. That stuff bothers me. I ain't going to do it. Don't care what you say. You're in the wrong for trying to tell me to go do it. I'm not the one in the wrong. I'm just being smart about it. <laughs> God's saying, don't do that. 
get that stuff with it, you almost look at it. Better not do it. Right? If God tells you to do it, He's going to protect you. But He's also telling you not to do it by past experiences, by those little strands. Man, I've got hurt. <laughs> that thing's hotter than a firecracker here. I'm not going to stick my bare hand on it. If I had to move it, I'll put a big old oven mitt and move it quickly so it don't burn through the oven, oven mitt. I'll get it done, but not let it tear me up, okay? Now, <clears throat> I, I, I was talking quite a bit there, but um, it's all right. I, I, I think I needed to say that before we get on into uh, John chapter 3, verse 19, okay? I, I was studying quite a bit earlier on that, and then I had the ice and stuff. Now I'm, I, I'm ready to do it. It's coming out, okay? So, <clears throat> let me reread this a little bit, and then we'll start breaking it down, okay? In John 3, 19, it says, And this is the condemnation, that light is coming to the world, and men love darkness rather than light. Than light, yeah. Because the deeds, their deeds were evil, okay? Okay. Now, Let's get on down here. In the interlinear Bible, <clears throat> we're going to break down that that from the original language, but that's not the end of it. You got to interpret it with the Spirit of God, because there's a dichotomy in this thing, both the red way and the green way. All right, I don't you don't know about that. Okay. Now this first word that they translate here is this. Okay, and the uh, interlinear is this. The second word's and, okay? But this this is from 3778, and it's H-O-Y-T-O-S. I think it's Hutos. Let me see if I pronounce it. Strong's G, 3778, Hutos. 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 Okay. okay. Now, remember, this is both adversative Speaking of like disagreement, on the contrary, or at, you know, it's it's a, a adversative. Speaking of like, if God's saying be reasonable, sit my way, and you're being adversative to that, it's red way, right? And it's also uh, uh, cumulative. It accumulates like you know, the strands come down, you agree. First time plus rely upon that, that seed of Christ, rest and rely upon it, you get one strand. Then the next time you do it in green light again, go the green way, you get two more. It makes two plus one. It accumulates. The next time, four plus one plus two. And then it accumulates on up. Okay, so it's cumulative. And, uh, now, if you're green with God, it's a... It's, uh, the adversative to God is red way, and the cumulative is green. Now, if you're green with your old uh, beast nature, your Adamic nature, your old me, myself, and I telling you what's good and bad, and saying that's your king, that's your God, then then it, it flips. So then you're being adversative to God. In his right way, and you're being accumulated to your own beast nature. You're falling away from God. You're going the red way, which is falling away from God. If you agree with God, you're going to the green way. So it's really you're looking green way and red way in the eye of a storm, right? When God's up, up there to whatever level you need, whether it's that level you got two strands going to four. Or you're up there at 1,024 going to 2,048. Or you're way back here at the very beginning trying to get the first strand. And this is in each and every area of your thinking process. God can do however many he wants. That's up to him. That's not up to you. God's not going to overwhelm you, though. It's going to overwhelm, maybe seem like it's overwhelming you. 
Okay, but it's it's not. He'll give you to where you just got to give all. You got to surrender all. And not just one time. Well, I surrendered all at once. And now I'm done with that crap. I ain't doing that no more. Don't surrender it to your carnal mind. Surrender it to God. See? To carnal means non-spiritual. Go your non-spiritual way or go God's spiritual way. God, your own righteousness or God's righteousness. Your Adamic way or God's way. Huh? God's way or ways are higher than our ways. Superior. His thought processes are superior. God loves us beyond the description of mere words. There's other way you don't let it real love you. It's just saying, I'm the buddy of your pal, or you're a dirty rotten sinner, or you're a dirty scumbag. Hmm. It's not saying nothing like, at the, like in a Genesis chapter 1, verse 31. That says, God, that's Elohim. That's, that's a multiplicity of God, okay? Uh, looked in all that he made and said that it was not just good, it was very good. Talking about the outside stuff, but more importantly, inside. God set up like this this pattern, this insurance clause in you. So you don't lose none. Hmm? That's way beyond any humanistic way of thinking. Huh? They want to throw you in hell and condemn you and torment. Hmm? Very easy to, to just, man, be malicious and, to, you know, there's no good at all in that person. No, yeah, there is. Whether they can, they know about it or not, or they've gotten so callous down that they can't even, in these areas, they can't even start to change. It burst their Bible to try. But fortunately, God's put an insurance clause that see the faith, that measure of faith, that limited portion. It's so light they don't know nothing about it. Okay, maybe it's, you know, but God's got them covered. They'll be very, very, very lightweight in God's character, but there are, but. But you're not throwed into no, uh uh. God cannot deny himself. Okay? Who's the judge? Who's the, the one that makes the decision? God. Huh? Just like the anointed Messiah said in, in uh, Luke chapter 23, verse 30, uh, 33, 34. Okay? Um, when they was crucified and on the cross, okay? All right? They said, uh, Father, forgive them for they know not what they're doing. Okay? Now, right there, let's go over it for, I'll, I'll cut, go back to this first, but I just want to, man, there's a lot right there. I can't, I, I'm not going to try to break it down all down. I'm just going to do one little word in there. Uh, in Luke chapter 23. Hang on just a minute. Uh, let me get it up here. Yeah, on verse thirty-three, when it says, "And when they had come, when they were come to the place which is called Calvary, that's the place of the skull, not a coincidence. Where's the holy place inside you? Okay. Uh, there they crucified him." Uh, and the male factors, one on the right, one on the left. Then Jesus said, "Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what to do. And they parted his raiment and cast lots. Okay, I'm not going to break all this down just in, right now. In verse 33, when it said crucified. Okay, hang on now. Let me get to that. I want to show you just a, just a little bit. And you can go look at it yourself. So, man, it's not a two-member beam. Okay, I know I'm not even really getting started in this. For well, I am, but not. We'll go more. Okay, okay. Now this, um, it actually says for, they translate it as they crucified. It's forty-seven seventeen, and it's S T A R 
oh, oh. Strong's G, 4717, star ra -o. Star, -ra -o. star -ra -o. Okay. Now, that is the verb form of it, okay? And it comes from the etymology from 4716, okay? That star -o means to stake, to drive down stakes, okay? Or, uh, let's see here. Yeah, and then it's the same as the cross, okay? Now, that's the verb form of it. Now, the etymology of that word, starao, comes from 4716, and it's S-T-A-U-R-O-S, this word. Strong's G, 4716, Staros. 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 Staros, okay? It's a masculine noun, okay? And it's a cross... Oh my, there's a lot here on it, but uh, <clears throat> it's a stake or a post. That's where they, they nailed to it, and it was common practice. They impelled them. This thing right here is saying up there uh, is where they did that to Jesus. Rough stuff. Okay, I'm about to run out of time. Um, I love you. We'll get back into John 319 next time. Okay, this has been uh, Spiritual Toolbox number 256. Have a great day. I'll probably continue this.